Hi, I'm Rebecca, and I'm CIHR Health System Impact Fellow with both Ameris Consulting and also with the University of Ottawa under the supervision of Dr. Christy Adamo. I started out doing my bachelor's at Queen's University in Life Sciences, and then after that I did my master's in Sciences in Kinesiology with Dr. Jennifer Cook, and then following that I did my PhD in Health Promotion with Dr. Jennifer Irwin. So initially, I, I think halfway through my PhD, I realized I was hoping for a different path other than academia. So kind of funny that I uh, did a postdoc, uh, but I think when I was finishing up my PhD, this uh, unique opportunity came up. It was a new postdoc opportunity um, where we could divide our time with an industry partner and also spending time uh, with an academic partner and the idea was to expand our experiences beyond a traditional academic environment. Hmm. So uh, just to give a bit of background uh, of how the fellowship started, uh, what the Institute, specifically in CIDR, the Institute of Health Services and Policy Research was recognizing uh, was that you know a lot of their graduates, PhD graduates and postdocs were pursuing uh, jobs in different sectors other than the academic sector. So a lot were kind of trending towards the public sector, government, and private sector, not for profit. So that's why they created this fellowship um, because they knew that about 85% of their institute's graduates were um, not securing any academic positions. Um, so back to your question about what this fellowship is. <laughs> um, it's an opportunity to support uh, graduate students after their PhD or within their PhD with um, non-traditional academic competencies. So expanding on um, competencies like project management, leadership, dialogue and negotiation, so that uh, graduates are more well prepared for, um, I guess, more health system related organizations uh, beyond academia. Um, so I guess the way my fellowship works is that I spend um, in a week, I'll spend four days a week uh, working at my host organization, which is Ameris Consulting, and then one day a week is protected research time, which I do research with uh, my academic partner, which is the University of Ottawa. So four days a week, um, you know, depending on what host organization a fellow is with, um, is divided in uh, doing projects that support their kind of organizational mission value or mission goals. Uh, so I do a lot of a variety of projects uh, related to health economics and market access, which has been a really interesting area to delve in. Um, and then also seeing links uh, with research and how we could um, also kind of bridge both industry and academia together. Um, so I've really enjoyed the experience just because I was looking for a more um, industry um, type of balance. Um, not to say that you know my my role or my duties haven't changed too much as a full time researcher to um, to a kind of industry position. I think what's changed is a little bit more uh, more autonomy. Is that okay to say? <laughs> I think with uh, the industry, there's definitely more tighter de deadlines. <laughs> um, with research, we know that uh, there's a lot of uh, things on the go um, in terms of there's you know the de the deadlines are still there uh, in terms of, like publishing manuscripts um, applying for grants uh, but I feel with maybe specific to the host organization I'm in some things need to be done within the day or you know we have this proposal that we need to submit within two days um, so it's really exciting though because I get to delve into a more um, broad set of uh, I guess topics, so not just in health research, even though that's also so broad, but this is going um, a lot of different, uh, just within my organization, a lot of different um, diseases or different medical devices, so really interesting work there. Awesome. The two pieces of advice that I would give for prospective graduates, number one would be to just simply network. And I know it's a very daunting task, it's, it's set a lot, but it is so, so important. And I know there's a little bit of anxiety that comes with it when you say networking or networking event. And I would try to rethink that and consider it more about being curious. So being curious about what other people do. Does that align with your interests? That's actually a better way to find that out. 
um, because you don't want to spend a lot of time preparing for an interview, preparing for a job, and then once you get there within three months, realizing that it didn't fit with your passion, it didn't fit with your interests. So I would highly encourage everyone to go out on LinkedIn, look at different organizations, see who works there, see if you can link up, and just even talking, asking for a coffee um, to learn about that organization. Uh, the second piece of advice, I would just say, really understand your own, really understand your own interests, right? So this kind of ties in with the first part. Um, what I've actually recently been recommended was creating some sort of maturity map. So, you know, really mapping out what you've done, where, where you want to go, um, or where you've been, and where you want to go. So that way you can kind of get a sense of where your passions lie, where your interests lie, and it'll give you a better sense when you're being curious out there with all these different organizations and knowing how to be targeted and kind of also in a way branding um, your profile and what you enjoy doing.